Good morning, guys. Uh, got a little bit of an update on the 20. We uh, got power to it and uh, found some problem that uh, wasn't there when I tested it over in the other shop. But before we get to that, uh, I'd like to uh, take a minute to, I guess, apologize or clarify some remarks I made on one of the earlier videos about moving machines. Uh, my friend Don and I were talking about our uh, uh, moving the uh, cylindrical grinder over and how it needed repair on the end where I broke off the end of the, the table. And Don said, get Brian to weld it. So if you're moving it down the road, it could fall off or it could slide completely off and break the end off. This is what the other end used to look like. Get Brian. Well, that <clears throat> I think I'll give it a shot myself this time, Brian. Thank you. I'm just trying to motivate you. He, he makes them really strong. I want a little strong, but I don't want to mess up the ways. Well, Brian Block, and I'll put a link to his channel, had a horrific accident years ago where he cable broke on his overhead winch and dropped his huge radial arm drill down to the ground. I thought it was toast. I thought you just back it up, put it on a truck and haul it to the scrapper. But Brian got in there and started welding that sucker. I mean, he welded two inch thick welds into that and, uh, and today it's just working fine. Well, when my friend Don said, get Brian to, the first thing that went into my mind was those two inch welts. I mean, it was huge, massive heat going in. And, and, and my poor little grinder, there it is over here. My poor little grinder. Well, This is the part on my grinder that needs welding. It's really thin. And I, I mean, I swear, first thing I thought of was two inch thick, massive welds and heat going into this thing. And I kind of said, well, uh, I think I'll try it myself. In no way did I mean to uh, belittle Brian's welding skills. In fact, he can do great jobs. In fact, he just welded up an engine block. But that wasn't what went through my head. I could imagine rods about that thick welding on my poor little grinder. So, Brian, if you took it that way or if anybody took it that way, I am truly sorry. I never meant to disparage your welding skills. I think you're probably one of the best channels on YouTube. I learn a lot from you. All right. On to something else. Yesterday, Don, my friend, came over. And uh, we started running some electricity for the uh, the new lathe. This is my setup for electricity here. I don't have three phase, so I have to make it. That is a single phase 220 box. That is a phase craft uh, converter control. Goes outside through some uh, conduit to the. Uh, back of the shop where there's a 20 horsepower uh, motor sitting out there generating the three phase. Then it goes over to a uh, three phase control panel or breaker panel. And right now I just disconnected the, uh, the line going over here to the planer so I could use its breakers for the lathe. I've got to go stop by and get some more breakers. Anyway, we put it in conduit. Go, hold on, hold on. We. This is better than a ride at Disneyland. Went all the way around here and came over and down. Let me climb up here. That's where it goes into the uh, the box. That's a huge box and inside is just one little contactor. I mean, it's way overkill. But, it's what I got. I usually, or, or my other axle sends had the line coming down and would go across the floor. 
but dead gummit you you can't sweep and it's hard to it's a trip hazard so this time we went up here and came down and uh, I may have screwed myself because right there is where we're going to mount a crane uh, the gantry crane to come over and service this lathe how about that big honking motor didn't really realize it but that's a 20 horsepower motor uh, in all the pictures of axles as I've seen I've never seen one with that big of a motor on a 20 inch I don't know if it was special or they somebody adapted it or, or what they put a cover over the, the spindle in and you see down through there Anyway, we got it all powered up and found a problem. Before I show the problem, in my introduction, I, I showed this pallet of tooling that came with it. Uh, it's kind of hard to get a scale, but that right there is 20 and a half to 21 inches in outside diameter four jaw chuck. And that is the steady rest. So it's roughly about two feet across also. Got a little bit of tooling. One of the upcoming videos I explained why I didn't get it all. Uh, some tooling holders and some soft jaws for the chuck. Very minimal. Got a tool post that needs a ball on it at least. It seems to fit good. And a three jaw that's in good shape. On to my problem. Let me turn on some power here. This is what I like about the phase craft boxes. First, it's made in America. Getting more and more important to me. Down here, you just push the button. I now have three phase power. No belts, no pulleys, no capacitors mess with. Hit the button and it starts. And I put it outside so that uh, you don't have to listen to it. Uh-oh. My plant watering system is not working well. I'm going to have to increase the uh, size of that pump down there in the sump to get more water up here to it. Anyway, she starts. And when you're in this gear setup, nothing happens. Now I tested every single speed range while I was there. And this worked at high speed. So I don't know why it's not working right now, but it has to do with this lever here. I'm letting it wind down so I could switch it into gear. Every other thing works except this this one right there. So in the upcoming video we're gonna take off its head. Off with its head. All these screws right here will allow me to take off the top. And in a way, that's a good thing. I, I don't know what it is that's it's not aligning up here. Uh, I know that it went to its top speed of 1288 while I was there. You can kind of see it's got oil about to right there. But it's awful dark, and I guarantee you they didn't change the oil filter in this for years. So, off with its head. And that allowed me to flush it out real well. 
I'm going to pop this one out and buy some new ones. I found a place to buy them online, economical. They're hard to find. And I'm going to replace this one. Behind this one is a drip tube, so it can, you can see that the oil pump's running. And I'm going to go down there and replace that one. Change the oil and the, everything out. Um, I don't know what's wrong, but taking off the head will allow me to uh, get down in there and get a suction unit and suck out all the bottom, clean the filters, and just check it out. I don't really want to. I'll leave well enough alone, but I'd like to have my top gear back. Not that I'll ever use it. Well, got to level it up. And I've got some upcoming videos of moving it in here. It's the first time I've ever used a rigger, mainly because it cost me about $2,500. But uh, sure was nice having some young people doing some work. Got my travel dial back. They uh, had removed it. Okay, well, just something I wanted to get off my chest. And as I said before, Brian didn't mean anything by it. Thanks for watching.